As Prime Minister Modi announced the biggest healthcare scheme in the world, Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Monday launched the Ayushman Bharat Digital Mission. The Ayushman Bharat Digital Health Mission, a unique digital health ID, will be provided to every citizen using details such as Aadhaar and your mobile number. This health ID will contain all health records of the person. National Digital Health Mission, उसका भी आरंभ किया जा रहा है. भारत के हेल्थ सेक्टर में ये एक नई क्रांति ले आएगा इलाज में आने वाली परेशानियां कम करने के लिए टेक्नोलॉजी का बहुत सुविचारित रूप से उपयोग होगा Hi everybody on 12th of January 2022 the government of india rolled out a revolutionary system called the unified health interface under the ayushman bharat digital mission and just like the upi which brought along a payment revolution in india the uhi is an open network designed to bring out a healthcare revolution in india and just like upi brought in a game changing platform for fintech companies uhi is a game changing platform for medtech fintech health tech insurance doctors and even hospitals and the irony is that in spite of this being such a legendary initiative the mainstream media has barely covered it so in this case study let's do a deep dive and try to understand what exactly is the unified health interface what is so special about it that it can revolutionize four different industries and the lives of 1.4 billion people what are the pros and cons of this initiative and most importantly as students of business what are the study materials to help you understand this game changing initiative better This video is brought to you by IDC First Bank but more on this at the end of the video. To understand the power of UHI we first have to understand the major problems prevailing in the existing Indian healthcare system and we also need to understand the challenges faced by the stakeholders in the ecosystem. To tell you about it the first problem we have is the lack of an easily accessible database to store and access our medical records. So today considering the fact that medtech penetration in India is at less than 10% most of us get hand written prescriptions take it to the pharmacy buy the meds get well soon and forget about the illness. Similarly for major health issues we have these giant files with reports test results x-rays ct scans bills insurance receipts all of them in one messy bunch of files. and by chance during shifting or in a flood situation if you lose these files unless you went to a high tech hospital in the country all these critical medical details of the patients become very difficult to retrieve or even worse they get lost forever so the next time you go to a doctor he or she won't know the details of your treatment and what exactly were the meds that you took the second problem we have is the lack of awareness and during my conversation with the doctors in the think school community they told me that most of the people in the tier 2 and tier 3 cities don't even know the kinds of operations they have undergone and even worse they sometimes give wrong information which further leads to complications for example even if somebody had a hernia operation they wouldn't be able to tell or show the records of the same to the doctor and the third problem we have is our inability to get medical history during an emergency for example if a man is brought to the hospital after road accident and is losing a lot of blood the hospital has no way to instantly know whether he's a diabetic what blood group he belongs to what What allergies he has, which drugs is he sensitive to, and so on and so forth. So by default, the diagnosis time increases, and hence increasing the chance of death. And the same thing applies to old people also. So tomorrow, if an old man with diabetes falls unconscious, there is no way for the hospital to know what drug he was taking, what other diseases he has. So again, until the hospital retrieves this data from his relatives, it could be too late. and this brings us to the fourth problem that we have and that is report sharing and getting second opinions so now most of the hospitals give you the scanned reports and videos on a cd or a film so if you want to take a second opinion you either have to travel all the way to the doctor and show them all the reports and pictures or you'll have to send them the picture through whatsapp or email and this is messy for two reasons number one the handwritten notes are difficult to read and secondly the photos of critical reports like x-ray are not so accurately readable on photos and lastly we have the language barrier so if we have a 13 year old tribal girl who doesn't speak a common language then again it's very very difficult to know if she's having any genetic issues and in some cases random transfusion can lead to shock and even death and this is where ladies and gentlemen the unified health interface comes in as a game changer so the question is what is uhi and how will it solve these problems Well in simple words UHI is a tool just like a UPI whereby just like UPI ID all of us will have something called the health ID so let's try to understand the building blocks of UHI 
Firstly, we have the health information providers, which includes doctors and hospitals who are offering their services. It will also include diagnostic centers offering their service and public health programs. And then we have the health information exchange and consent manager. And lastly, we have the health information users who are again doctors, hospitals, citizens and public health programs. In the health information, we will have the health ID, the registry of the healthcare professionals and the registry of the healthcare facilities. So first of all, all the diagnostic facilities and hospitals will have to register with the UHI and there'll be a verification system to make sure that only legit doctors and hospitals get approved. Then, just like we all downloaded an app for UPI, we will get registered and enter all the existing medical history into that app as intricately as possible. And after that, every time you go to a doctor or hospital or a diagnostic center, all your reports, prescription and doctor comments will be updated on that particular platform with your health ID. This will include everything from cough and cold to allergies to medications, their side effects, CT scans and every important observation made by the healthcare professionals. So five years later, when you go to your doctor, all you need to do is your normal checkup and share your health card with her through your health ID. And if you want to share it with a doctor a thousand kilometers away, all you need to do is give him access to your health card just like you give access to your Google Drive request. And more importantly, even if your grandmother does not know anything about her treatment, the doctor can use her health ID to access her reports and come to a more accurate clinical decision. Now, most people will be like, yeah, bro, so what? This is just a data entry, data sharing feature, right? Then why is it such a big deal? Well, guess what? This is where the second dimension of UHI comes in, whereby it extends further to accessibility. You see guys, today, if you want to have a list of all the hospitals near you, you could just Google it. But if you want a unified platform like Amazon, whereby you can actually check all the facilities in each of these hospitals along with their status, there is no platform for that, isn't it? For example, you cannot apply filters and track which hospital has an XYZ surgery facility, what's their rating, what is the availability status of the operation theater, availability of the beds and other facilities for your specific treatment. And you don't have all the diagnostic facilities in India registered on a single platform. So even with apps like Practo, both the service provider and the user have to be on the same app to get the information for the same. And this is what UHI will solve. Secondly, UHI will also help you get all the ambulance facilities under one roof to help you get an ambulance from the hospital that can reach you at the earliest. Apart from that, you also have teleconsultation, home visits and other facilities as listed on the screen. And thirdly, you can also check which pharmacy near you has a specific drug without roaming around the city for hours. And this is what brings me to the third dimension of UHI, which are government welfare schemes and health insurance. Now, after registering your health ID, as you have enough data entered with your health ID, just like we have the Sybil score that defines how risky is it to lend to you, in this case, you will get a health score by which insurance companies can actually help you choose the right policy. And again, from my interaction with the doctors in the Think School community, there are cases where the patients have chosen an insurance policy that they think is perfect according to their knowledge. But when they get admitted into the hospital, after the bill crosses 4 to 5 lakh rupees, that is when the insurance company start digging into the patient history. This is when, if the insurance company finds out that knowingly or unknowingly, the patient did not reveal a certain health problem that they had, the entire policy itself gets cancelled. But with the health score and UHI records, the insurance companies can access how risky or safe you are as a customer and other charge you more or less depending on your health history. So if you're a fit person, the premium would be less. And if you're a person with bad health record, the premiums would go up. And more importantly, if you have a single database of all of your medical history, tomorrow you don't have to worry about the insurance company digging into your medical history and finding something that you must have revealed but could not due to some reason. At the same time, the insurance company will not have a hard time in evaluating the customers. This is the third dimension of UHI, which is insurance coverage and ease of insurance business. And lastly, we come to the most important pillar of all, which is public welfare schemes. Now, people, in the past seven years, the government of India has taken the Digital India Initiative to the next level by introducing some of the most powerful products we have ever seen. And these products have become even more powerful when they work together in conjunction. In this case, because people already have Aadhaar, it becomes easier for them to verify their identity on the UHI platform. With GST number and digital documentation, it becomes easier for the healthcare facilities to register themselves. With Jandhan Yojana, more people have bank accounts. Because of UPI and Rupe, people can use these bank accounts seamlessly for making payments in the UHI platform. And all of this put together 
once you have all the data of the patients in a single unified platform, do you see how magical this is? The government can actually use all this data to roll out some super effective public welfare schemes. For example, if the UHI database says that there are 10,000 diabetic patients in area 1 and 5,000 in area 2, tomorrow if there's an epidemic that attacks the diabetic patients easily, they can efficiently manage the supply chain of vaccines such that area 1 gets more vaccines and area 2 gets less vaccines. Secondly, they could also send a push notification to specific people to prompt them to go and take the vaccines. And lastly, when these patients come to take their vaccines, the healthcare workers can immediately verify their diabetic condition simply by checking their health ID. So you see, this doesn't just optimize the vaccine supply, but will also prevent wastage and shortage at the same time. Similarly, tomorrow if the government understands that due to rising costs, a large segment of the population in a specific area is experiencing a certain illness from the UHI data, they can roll out subsidies to the Jandhan accounts and quickly execute it for the well-being of the public. This is how the Aishman Bharat Abhiyan's Unified Health Interface, just like UPI, is setting the stage for yet another revolution in India. You see guys, the banks have played a major role in the UPI revolution and one of them is our partner for this episode and that is IDFC First Bank. IDFC First is a new age bank that's revolutionizing the way India banks. What I love about them is that it operates under the principle that customer's interest comes first. For example, they are the first universal bank in India to credit interest on savings account on a monthly basis instead of quarterly basis as followed by other banks. So IDFC First customers earn interest on a monthly compounding basis as compared to quarterly basis with other banks. They are on a mission to create the world's most customer friendly bank and I genuinely think their products and services are specifically designed for that mission. They also offer pretty attractive interest rates. While most banks offer interest rates of 3 to 3.5% 3 per annum, IDFC First Bank's interest rates start at 4%. And on balances of 10 lakh rupees and above, you earn 6.25% per annum. And you can know more about their savings account from my previous episode on CBDC. And if you thought their savings account is great, you will love their credit cards too. Their credit cards have zero annual charges and zero joining fees. But what's more important is that there are no minimum spend conditions. Whereas most other banks waive annual fees subject to minimum spend conditions. And not just that, at IDFC First, the reward points are very attractive and they never expire. That's not all. They are the only universal bank that allows reward points to be redeemed online against the next online purchase. Now, isn't that customer friendly? If this sounds useful to you, you can open an IDFC First bank savings account or get their credit card from the link in the description. Moving on to the challenges, here are the most important pointers that we and the government needs to consider while the UHI program gets executed. Number one is the concern of privacy because we're talking about sharing critical patient data and a complete database that contains the sensitive information of 1.4 billion people. So the question is, how do we keep it secured and how do we make sure that it always goes to the most authentic and reliable source? Secondly, the medtech entrepreneurs in India have worked very hard to bring in some game-changing tech into the market. And I'm just hoping that this initiative does not end up killing the medtech industry in India. Thirdly, five years down the line, UHI will have all the data that is fine. But right now, there are hundreds of millions of people in India who do not know anything about what operation they had and what exactly is their medical history. So apart from the ideal next generation population that we're talking about, the question is, how do we make UHI equally useful for the existing generation, which already has its medical data in one messy bunch of files? And this is going to be the biggest challenge of all. And lastly, since the doctors will be basing their decisions on the basis of the medical data in the UHI, the question is, how do we make sure that nobody, including the patient herself, does not input the wrong data that could prove fatal to her? These are the challenges that the government needs to overcome to make sure that the unified health interface is implemented and is made useful as soon as possible. Now you let me know what according to you are the challenges and opportunities of the UHI in the comments below. And also you can open your IDC First Savings account or get a credit card and get incremental value through their customer friendly products through the link in the description. That's all from my side for today guys. Please find all the study materials in the description. If you learned something I will, please make sure to the like button in order to make YouTube Baba happy. And for more such insightful business and political case studies, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye bye. Oh,